Hey everyone, this is TDD Academy. Uh, we have, today, we have, everyone probably knows David. David Kuhn, hi. say hi. Yeah. Hello. And uh, today we have a special guest, uh, Alexi, and you know what, I didn't learn to say your last name, so please introduce yourself and where you're calling from. Uh, hello everyone, so I'm Alexi. Uh, last name Naumov, but it doesn't matter, you can call me just Alexi. <laughs> so I'm calling from Russia, I'm based in Moscow. And I've been invited to this show to discuss TDD and some tools that I've worked on recently. Cool. Uh, so, so, um, so you know, one of our callers, our, our call, our early call-in people, had some questions, and they said, um, "Hey, Lexi, uh, what's your backstory? Where did you learn to code?" <laughs> so, I. I will try to make it really short because I would rather talk about tech topic. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, start, I started to code at a high school and it was really back long, one day back in the history. But uh, yeah, so started to code for Apple platforms in 2011. So this year it's nine years after since then. So I do remember, you know, that objective C things and uh, wow. laying out with frames and uh, iOS 4.5, I believe, or 4.3. So yeah, it was um, tough times. Now we have all <laughs> this uh, auto layouts, Swift UI, all the new things that actually allowed, um, you know, they, it lowered the uh, entry, uh, how, how it's called. So it's now easier to Sweet. join the party. Yeah, and uh, kind of start programming. Because I've had several people reaching out uh, with the questions about SwiftUI, and uh, they were showing their like projects, tiny pet projects they were working on, and like literally everyone from them uh, had no like previous experience with programming. They used to be designers, you know, any other uh, uh, job, and. Uh, basically, they saw SwiftUI and they just started using it, started writing their dream apps <laughs> so yeah it's it's crazy apple is doing a really good job at this like expanding uh their platforms and uh making it easier for others to develop it that's kind but, of the uh, uh yeah. wild, wild wild west where all kinds of new people got into coding because of the excitement of the iphone and the ipad true yep um so so we're here to talk about something you built called X uh, View Inspector. <laughs> Sorry, huh. View Inspector, and uh, we're pretty excited about it. Like David and I were looking for a solution to a problem, but uh, before, you know, tell me what, why, why did you build this? Yeah. So, uh, approximately a year ago, I was seeking for a job, and uh, one of the job openings had. Uh, Swift UI requirement. So it was a brand new app and they wanted to develop it in Swift UI. So before that, I was just, um, you know, uh, casually exploring it, probably as other developers one year ago, nothing serious practically. And so back then I decided, okay, let's try something. So I, I applied to that job and uh, they gave me a uh, test uh, project to complete. So I did it, but I faced so many problems and like, it wasn't really straightforward to write it right. Like it seems simple. And from Apple's presentation and from all the uh, tutorials, it looks like you type a couple of lines of code and it magically appears on the screen. But uh, in practice, there are so many things that can go wrong, especially if you have, uh, uh, I call it UI kit, mindset like you think that there are sub views and like you try to apply your previous uh, experience to swift ui while you shouldn't <laughs> really you should uh completely get rid of all the things that you've known and uh, like start from scratch because it's a completely different paradigm it's a dramatic shift in thinking and so uh like view inspector was 
uh, it, it was born randomly because I was just debugging yet another problem with Swift UI and like I took a struct and I printed it to a deep, like a LLDB debugger and I kind of, I saw internals, there were plenty of things available there. And so the idea popped up to my mind immediately, like I can dig into Swift UI stuff inside, which is hidden. And um, yeah, that's how I kind of started building this thing. So I had a prototype, I, well, obviously uh, the, the way Xcode prints uh, things into the debugger when you do PO something is it uses a reflection, Swift reflection, which is uh, part of the language. And so I used this same approach and um, yeah, that's how I built a prototype of your inspector and later on, uh, like I, it, I love to call it fully fledged tool <laughs> right now, but there are still so many things that are not finished yet. So um, oh, yeah, plus it works for me. Uh, yeah, and yeah, it, there are plenty of things that I need to complete, but uh, yeah, I think we'll get back to this later. So yeah, but that's where we are. So yeah, and David, you can jump in whenever, and uh, if you want to take the next question, <laughs> that's okay. Um, where I'm headed is, uh, so David and I, I'll, I'll, let me describe a little bit about why we looked for uh, a, a solution like uh, View Inspector. Um, and uh, I'm going to use. I'm going I'm to introduce everyone to our, our virtual personality, uh, Taylor Swift. So uh, Taylor. Yeah, Taylor Swift. And so, so Taylor Swift showed up and told us some some rules here. Uh, so Taylor says uh, the bearing of a. Let's see. One moment here. Let me introduce everyone to Taylor. <laughs> Hi, Taylor. So Taylor is a, one of those uh, high-end designer type uh, Swift UI developers. And he, Taylor says the clothes are the code. The clothes and the code are a measure of the man, says Taylor. Um, and uh, Taylor is a very dedicated uh, iOS developer, likes to do it in the pool. He'll, he'll do some coding in the pool uh, if, if that's how, that's how he likes to relax. And Taylor told us, I don't know if he told you, David, but Taylor dropped by and told me that the bearing of proper micro tests are as follows. It executes in milliseconds. It doesn't use a network. It doesn't use the file system. It never is flaky. Uh, it's always properly styled and readable. And it's maintainable. And also, it can be executed. These tests can be executed on an airplane, especially if you're in first class. So. Oh. This is the level Taylor's at. And so Taylor, after he dropped by, I real, you know, I was thinking about, you know, the other strategies to use XCUI tests, and they definitely don't execute in milliseconds. They have to run this simulator and they take time to load up the UI and then it um, and then operates that. And that clearly isn't a micro test e anyhow. So that's that's what that's what got uh, David and I interested in in doing um, uh, looking for a solution like XCUI because uh, I don't know, I, I, Alexi, I don't know if you tried this, but I thought, well, why can't we just new up a view and then inspect a couple things and see if the view's rendering right? And, and we couldn't do that. And you probably yeah. know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, it was a completely, uh, one of the most uh, tricky parts uh, of uh, view inspector to actually uh, make it render and like pretend uh, I, I know, bootstrap the SwiftUI view so it, Xcode would consider it uh, seriously, I would say. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just, it's just a struct and uh, it's not connected to state. It's like really just piece of nothing. You cannot properly inspect it, so to say. Right. So, you know, that moves us into the next question. How does this work? Yeah, so at a very high level, as I said, it's uh, using reflection, uh, but it works for the simplest cases uh, in a previous show that you, ha you had, where you tried uh, view inspector, you actually had uh, uh, pretty simple views that never, that, that, that didn't have uh, external state. 
and they never even had uh, add state variables inside them. Uh, so once the view has anything with the at symbol, like any property wrapper that is responsible for connecting the state, uh, the traditional approach wouldn't work because the view is a struct and this, the uh, state is always something, it's basically some kind of handler for Swift UI. So when, when you throw a struct at the, it reads those handlers and knows where to connect this view in terms of the state. So it has its uh, pocket where it has all the variables, including at state variable, which looks like it's a local variable, but it's not really local. It's still external, it's stored externally. Um, so at the render time, the, these tiny structs, which are the views, are being connected to this different places inside that bucket, in, uh, which is totally private. You cannot really access it directly. And uh, after that, the view is been drawn correctly, following the algorithm that you um, wrote in it. And so the traditional approach uh, only gives you the struct and you can dig into this struct and you can see like what are the pieces of it, but you won't have access to the that external that SwiftUI render engine owns. And so for those, uh, for all such a cases, uh, I had to find a way to actually make Swift, make it connect to that, to that state so we can expect, uh, inspect it. And so for that, uh, there is a, a little bit trickier approach that the traditional one that he used. And it's actually, it's described in the guide that I have for uh, view inspector. So let me actually uh, open these just to kind of show what, what it is. Yeah, inspection guide. Um, so let's take this views using at state at environment or environment object. So uh, in order to inspect the view and its state, we need to kind of hijack the environment so the, that moment when the view is being drawn. And in order to do that, we actually have to introduce uh, like a hijack point inside the view. So uh, I usually use like the, the simplest case is to have this on appear uh, callback. The thing is that in the moment when you have a callback called uh, the, for on appear, the context of the Swift UI view is still live. So the view is connected. And so because on, on appear, you probably want to change some local state variable or you know do something. That's why the Swift UI does not disconnect this struct from the state. And so that was the perfect moment to inspect it. And so by providing uh, a callback, and triggering it inside the on appear, you can find yourself in a state where the view is connected to the external state, and you can, uh, you know, explore it. So that's that's how it works. So uh, that's uh, the simplest explanation I can come up with. <laughs> it's a complex beast back there, isn't it? Behind the screen. <laughs> yeah. Sort of, I, I had to, I didn't come up with this like one night. It, it was like uh, view inspector was there for a couple months and I didn't know how to inspect that state until uh, I, I think someone just uh, uh, submitted a ticket and like said, how do I inspect at state? And like, I didn't really dig too deep into that, that thing, but I figured out like why? Well, yeah, it looks like I won't be able to do that. And like I spent a few hours and then I just figured out, okay, yeah, here it is. Here's how we can do it. So view inspector kind of um, evolved from an idea of I could do a little bit to yeah. more and more and more. And now it's pretty fully functional. Um, yep. So I, I look really positive to what can be achieved with uh, View Inspector. As I said, there are still plenty of things that are not finished yet, but they're not finished 
mainly because I don't have enough time because most tricky parts are already you know solved so now it's just a matter of implementing certain modifiers because Drift2i has a lot of them and uh, yes most of the time I just need to kind of thoroughly go and like see how it looks if you, if we'll have time uh, by the end of this show I'll I'll show how I actually um, develop new like modifier inspection. It's really simple, by the way. It's just uh, pretty quick. I just sit like if I have once per hour uh, in the land of the working day, I just uh, you know sit and like write one other modifier because I have all the tools. Like I have very handy uh, function that helps me print out the entire infrastructure, and so I can easily know know get to know which. Uh, name I should use basically to kind of extract the internets. So as a user of um, view inspector, um, the part I know now, <laughs> which is not the whole thing, is that um, I I have to constantly uh, navigate, traverse down the view hierarchy there. Yep. And um, my, my usage problem that I'm slowly coming over is knowing whether or not this view that I'm going to inspect is um, a custom view or not, and what name I should use uh, to refer to it, and generally speaking, they're all lowercase, right? Your, mm -hmm. your, um, you, you take the view name, and and uh, use a lowercase version of that, make a call to that, and that is the uh, method that you you use. Yep. Is there it, maybe in your mind is there a good rule of uh, of how to do this, or is it? Yeah. Um, so. Um, you actually reminded me of another problem, which actually is the need of chaining all these things. When you, like, as a, uh, from TDD perspective, you may want just to test that your view contains uh, some label with certain text, and you don't really care about the inner structure. But with a view inspector currently, you have to properly construct the path to that structure. Uh, that string otherwise you won't be able to verify it so yeah there is a solution to that and uh, this is something in the pipeline where i want view inspector to dynamically uh, query the internal uh, elements so that you can write a proper tdd test where you say where you write test in the first place <laughs> and only then the view <laughs> because currently yeah, it's uh, the opposite you won't be able to write a test and then the view because you don't know the structure yet. So, but um, getting back to your question, uh, I usually, uh, so it's best to go step by step, so to say, because uh, view inspector uses uh, exceptions to indicate when you diverged from the right path. And so if you want to inspect a string deep inside certain view, you should start with a very first call after the inspect. So you just write SUT, inspect, and then you look at your view structure and uh, at the topmost, topmost level, you may have H stack, for example. So you call H stack and run the test. That tiny uh, command should not throw if you set up everything correctly because it would extract the h stack and call it a day after you verify that this mm -hmm. tiny thing worked after that you can add another thing inside h stack so you can query any view at a certain index and so that's how you can get to the right uh view or its inner state mm -hmm. Wow, you just reminded me uh, something that um, both James Granning and, and Lance are trying to make me comprehend is that the tiny step 
and letting the compiler uh, tell you what's wrong and what to fix is, is the TDD way. And in this case, you're letting the exception tell you what thing you need to inspect next, what you need to add to your uh, view yeah. stack. Um, I can conceptually understand that now that I know a little bit, just a little bit. Um, the practice of doing that would be, I, I, I think it's just going to be hard to go that tiny. Um, please tell me that you can do this and that it's, it becomes natural after a while, Alexi. Uh, yeah, so I can, we can refer to this sample project that I have where do you want me to actually uh, write something from scratch? Please. All right, so let's see. Yeah. Um, okay, I think I don't have a test for this. So this is the very root content view and it shows the app's content normally, but for unit tests, I have this flag. For unit tests, it kind of just shows the text running unit tests. So how about writing a test that verifies that? <laughs> when we run in tests, this thing shows uh, this text. Mm -hmm. Let's see. All right, so I should go to, I'm just afraid that I already have this test. Let's, let's pretend it never exists. Well, you, yeah, I, you I, could comment it out. <laughs> <laughs> let's see, oh. Right, right, you could comment it out and then run the test and see if they notice the missing uh, text. Is that what you're thinking of? Yeah, I just want to verify that it's there. I'm, I'm just closing the tabs because um, yeah, I cannot see all the things on the right side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the content view is here, the thing that we want to test. And I believe we need this guy. All right, so I won't bother with naming right now, just to save time. So let's call it like that. And okay. so what is the SUT? SUT is our content view, which has to be initialized with a bunch of parameters, including these running tests. Hey, uh, Lexi, may I pause a uh, second? So you, what you're about to do, let me check in. Are you about to write a, a unit test that checks that that text shows up in running unit tests? Yeah, just want to verify okay. this. And then um, do you believe that there's already a test for that or do you know? I thought it should be. Uh, let me see. Because one way you can yeah. test that is if you just comment out that line 26 and then execute your micro tests, then if they fail, you know you've already got a test for that. Oh, um, yeah, that's a good point. But I already see uh, that I don't have the test for this thing. I have a bunch of localized things. <laughs> So the way, um, yeah, so yeah. From a, I, I know I say this? from TDD, from, from yeah. a clear it, perspective, you'll be very clear. The computer will tell you if it's missing or not. If you just comment out line 26, sure. Or, yeah. or make a miss. Yeah. Type, take out the word test. There you are. Uh, what's going on? I typed something. Oh, right, we have. Right. so yeah, I changed the text. And as you said, if I had a test for this, it would fail. Yeah. <laughs> but apparently there is no test for this thing, which is good. We'll add one one now. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and this, this process is called defect injection. You're de injecting a defect with the intent to learn if your tests are covering that uh, behavior or not. Yeah, so the, there is no failing test, which means that there is um, a need to write one. Right, right, you got it. So, oh, actually, yeah, this, this test was doing something similar. There is a running test, true. Okay, but it does not verify the, the string. So let's do it. So I construct the view. Usually it's constructed this way, but the default parameter is, is running test. So apparently when the app runs, this parameter is false, which is why I have to explicitly make it true. So um, I don't know this structure yet. So I would start with try SUT um, inspect, and then uh, let's do H stack, for example. 
which is wrong because I can see we have a group there, but uh, let's see. Yeah, so it does not compile because uh, I didn't handle the exceptions potential here. So, so I need to add <laughs> throw. Uh, all right. Hey, so, hey, Alexi, what is the is running tests uh, part? Uh, unlike David, I didn't read any of the documentation. So uh, <laughs> is running tests, what does that do? Uh, could you repeat that? Oh, yeah, so, but you're using the is running test, uh, that, that, that flag. Oh, oh, yeah. So that flag actually toggles on and off the content of the app. Ah. So when, yeah, it, it just shows the stub instead. I got it. Yeah. So we have a failing test, which says, uh, yeah, this one type of view is not H stack, which means that I made like, uh, my choice was wrong. I assumed it's the H stack, but it says the topmost thing is a group here. So that's what I do. Okay. I call it group, run nice. the test. Yeah, well, this, I just realized that this message is really long. I should probably make it nicer and say like, hey, just use group instead of H stack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you if you would tell us what to do, that would be even better. <laughs> yeah. uh, in that in that library, I tried to I tried my best to with the most descriptive uh, messages like those which would guide you to the right solution, but not everywhere, as you can see. Well, so not everybody, button. not everybody has the mindset, has the context that you have. Um, yeah. And so uh, the average programmer is just wanting to know what they should do. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, too much information can be a, a deadly thing sometimes. Uh, yep. So, yeah, the next thing I add a text, it also passes. So we add a string, which we want to extract the string, uh, which also should succeed. And after that, um, I can verify that it's um, nice. the string that uh, I want to see there, which is xct equal. Uh, Let's do something like that. So it should fail. And after that, I, this is the uh, shortcut yeah. for copying the right uh, value. I would just All see right. the error and copy the right one yeah. from here. So but I want to yes. appreciate something before you make the test pass is that line 16 is the key thing that David and I didn't do. Uh, we didn't do a tight loop of, of exploring, letting the, the Apple, how do I say, the, the error runtime tell us, you know, give us feedback. We were, yeah. we were basically, uh, typing code, executing, and then trying to figure out what's happened. And usually we would go back to the source code and inspect it visually. But yeah, I like how you let the machine tell you what to do. So that was nice. I just learned a lot right here. Yeah, I did too. This is awesome. Yeah, so the test, yeah, that would pass. Cool. Yeah, so, so this, this is very so short. Hold on, why did the test pass? It was supposed to fail, wasn't it? He, or, no, he yeah. had it. You're just oh, he, he looking at the wrong the screen. <laughs> I already corrected it. Oh, yeah, so okay. It <laughs> okay, okay. He's he's faster than you are, <laughs> or faster than me at least. Uh, yeah. I have a question now. Um, you've got the index text zero mm -hmm. on the text instead of on the group. Yeah, so that's because group can potentially have multiple uh, children. So like here, you can have uh, an empty view. And so in this case, uh, if, we, if you consider this if statement just a uh, switch, which way we go. So group will either have text and empty view or it will have this, this thing. Mm -hmm. So the text is in this new in the in the in this environment where everything else does not exist, which is what we have when is running test is true. The group has text at, at the, its zeros position and uh, empty view at its first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I write the test now, uh, I can also extract 
the uh, empty view from, and actually, as you can see, uh, I have to specify the index here because view inspector knows that group uh, has, can potentially have multiple uh, children. And so you, it kind of suggests you to enter the, uh, provide the index, uh -huh. uh, which is not true. For example, if you have an M, any view and any view can only have one children. So in this case, if you type empty view, it would not suggest you to provide the, the index inside. Okay. Yeah, so obviously if I run it, this line will fail and this one will succeed. So actually we can um, keep it in the test. So I would just um, add here an assumption that, uh, assertion not assumption that this thing should throw and the other one should not uh, no throw oh what what does it suggest me a message not. here you know t note uh, no no throw. no it should uh, it should be throws here this guy should should throw and the other one should not and so i, I don't know the exact message here well what is the proper name? Let me look it up. XCT assert throws error. First, no, throws error. Oh, I see. Yeah. I should not specify a message here. It's a custom uh, assert function that I have in the view inspector, but I don't have it here. That's why I got confused. I thought it's mm. again. <laughs> yeah. In view inspector, I also verified that the error message that was thrown is what I expect. Nice. It's not like throw anything. Well, yeah. You were just exhibiting a good, how do I say, designer thinking when you when we saw that exception and you thought about it and said, hey, I think I can make that message clearer. So yeah, yeah if, you, if you're gonna design it, you might as well have a, a test that confirms it, that your design has got the clear message rather than the little yep. less clear. Yeah, so the test passes. This thing throws, this thing does not, which means that empty view is exactly at the at index one, mm -hmm. which is true. Yeah, I can revert this thing and it should work just, just fine. Uh, yeah, let's run. Awesome. I am learning a lot sitting here just watching you code. This is great. Yeah, I'm glad. <laughs> right. So shall we move on to the next question yeah, yeah. or we have anything here? I, that's David's favorite question. I don't want to get in the way of that. <laughs> Do you have it in front of you, David? Oh, no. What? Okay. No. Uh, I'm so not with you. You want to know what's missing? Oh. <laughs> and Alexi actually opened up with saying, like, there's some things that are missing. And, and, and uh, yeah, David wants to know your secrets about that. What's missing? <laughs> yeah, so... A proper name? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, in, in View Inspector, I'm, a, I'm afraid... I see the... I see the uh, it's like 0 0.5.4, something like that, is the, is the version number of View Inspector. So mm -hmm. I, I realized that it's... It's code being developed and stuff. And so we're not at a, an official release of 1.0 and stuff. So it makes me think, okay, at some point I'm going to run into something that hasn't been implemented yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't yet because I'm still doing, you know, very toy sort of stuff, not, not quite as uh, into it as you. But what, so what, what in View Inspector? Can View Inspector not do yet that you're? Uh, well, I have it visualized. So <laughs> there is a readiness uh, file, which you can find from the readme in the View Inspector main page. Oh. Yeah, and so it has. I read it well enough yet. <laughs> I didn't know this existed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's, it's there. Yeah. So uh, David, it, David. It, it has a. <laughs> Uh, That's why I don't even bother reading it. it this, I just assume I don't. <laughs> yeah, it, it has pretty uh, se several useful links for you. It's first of all, it's uh, of course the guide, yeah, uh, which I believe 
anyone who wants to try the inspector would have to um, check out because I wish it was simpler, <laughs> but this is the best I could come up with right now because of uh, how complex things are. So the guide is required, unfortunately, yes. but it, it, it's here. Yeah. And the other thing is this, um, the, this other link here under FAQs, the detailed list of which modifiers are supported. So yeah, all the standard views are supported. As you can see, the green check boxes, except for well, this one is also supported. I just, you cannot inspect it directly, but there is no need. And uh, the property wrappers are not supported, all of them. Specifically, Swift2i 2.0 introduced several new mm -hmm. um, property wrappers. As you can see, they're under development status. Okay. And for the view modifiers, again, there are some gaps. You can see this one is uh, like semi-supported, so to say. It's, uh, it's like you can get through uh, this modifier. So if you have this modifier in your code, it won't block you from inspecting uh, views underneath it because the view modifier wraps your view into another view. Mm -hmm. So if from perspective of the view inspector, it's like another fence, it needs to break through in order to inspect what's inside. And so certain, certain uh, modifiers um, make it uh, harder to break through. So for example, there is a modifier with the X, yeah. Background preference view. If your view is wrapped in this guy, um, currently view inspector won't be able to kind of make it work through that modifier. So the, the current solution is to either uh, break the, uh, so basically extract another custom view, which is wrapped inside uh, this guy and like test it separately. Okay. Yeah, or maybe move this thing somewhere else. So yeah, as you can see, it's not, uh, it, it's limited still. <laughs> and uh, well, let I me just see... say thank you. You, you, you are doing such a, a wonderful engineering job and doing you're doing the coding but you're also doing all the documentation yeah um of of you know it's currently up to spec in that you've got it all documented what works what doesn't and uh i i just haven't read the document hey, can i ask you a favor Put that link in bigger text and <laughs> point to it several different times or something because that's important and it got hidden. Yeah, and there's a lot I of agree. work that went into this. Sorry, Alexi. Like David's very demanding. I am. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah that's, that's a good awesome idea. because I love yeah. that you have an iconography. You tell us yeah. what's there. It's, for, it's pretty transparent, and uh, and and so for example, uh, what by having this document, if I'm struggling to try to get something inspected, uh, if I look through this document, I can see, oh, it's not supported. I shouldn't struggle anymore. I just need to find a different solution or or let it go. Yep. Yep. Or usually people just reach out in Twitter or somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> or they complain in Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Like me. Wow, you could get it. You need a bot soon to answer those Twitter calls and tell them, or, read the document. It says right here. <laughs> <laughs> I could probably automate you a, that. <laughs> yeah, you could yeah, automate I should, I that. Should, yeah, yeah, I, sh I should make my life easier. <laughs> Although oh, I like to talk to people, so. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, hey, if you're good, we're all good then. <laughs> Are you a people person then, Alexi? Uh, I wouldn't say so, but uh, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, well, I'm on isolation just as anyone else <laughs> with this uh, pandemic. So, so now you're a people person, uh, situationally. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> probably, yeah. So let's see, we have uh, 20 more minutes. Let's see. So the, the, I don't know, David, what do you think about the, the copy-paste cop uh, situation? Did you had a, you had I that? think you should, I, I, I think you should bring it up because okay. it always comes up. And Alexi is going to have some great insight. Into All right. This. All right. So, uh, something that comes up a lot on TDD Academy, in fact, every 
uh, live stream I've been on where there's coding is uh, this concept of that you shouldn't copy paste in your code base. Uh, and, and, uh, and so David said, you have a blog article about save your next app. And you mentioned a copy paste detector CPD inside of PMD. That's the sonar cube plugin, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us more. So, uh, really, I cannot think of anything to add. It's just a tool that helps you identify if there is a code that's been duplicated. So I'm, uh, I'm striving to write clean code and uh, copy and paste usually um, indicates that you have a pretty good candidate for uh, actually just refactoring and uh, expanding the uh, functionality to support two different cases. So there is no silver bullet, of course, and sometimes you want copy and paste. And uh, if the, for example, two screens are dr have dramatic difference, but certain pieces are similar. So you kind of copy the uh, template, so to say, and like start building it from there. Uh, what that tool does is it has certain threshold for identifying the copy and paste. So obviously if like you have exact match of 10 lines here and 10 lines somewhere else, it would say, hey, you probably should avoid this or kind of extract this code to a reusable function, for example. Uh, but it also has this threshold. So it can see that these lines look almost the same, but maybe naming is a little bit different, but like the instructions are similar and the kind of um, if statements are in the same places. So um, it's really useful uh, for not only uh, forbidding copy and paste, like uh, inducing proper styling in your team, uh, but it also helped me several times when I made the copy, like I copied the code unintentionally. So what? as I, I said, I'm not copy a... pasted something. <laughs> well, let me explain that. I was in a bad mood. I was in a bad mood. Like I, I want to finish this uh, quicker, or maybe <laughs> I thought this thing would be dramatically different, but after I finished uh, implementing it and refactoring, it turned out that I came up with a similar structure. And so copy and paste detector said, hey, you actually have something uh, that you may reuse from the other place. And so it's really nice. Cool. So yeah, that CPD thing um, is wonderful. I tend to include it in the new projects always. Although when I join another existing project and I say, hey, you don't have uh, Swift land here, and you don't have a copy and paste detector, so let's let's bring it in. And so you you plug it in, and Xcode throws like the hundreds of warnings for you. It's like, okay, that was a bad idea. <laughs> let's turn it off. <laughs> and so you go without it. So, but for new projects, it's a must. I would say. Nice. Okay, now I'm going to have to go figure out how to install those in our project, in our baseball project, Lance. Yeah. So, yeah, well, that's how homework. Well, that's CI. David wants to do, to do that. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to set up a, a CI on something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, GitHub. I saw a live stream the other day uh, where, where somebody did it on GitHub. Um, cool. So, uh, let's see here. What's the future look like for View Inspector? Like for example, will my test animation stop working on the next evolution of Swift when, when Apple releases Swift 6? So yeah, that's a good question. And let me open the homepage of Clean Inspector to show you something. So here it has like a badge which says that the code coverage is 99%. And the truth is it's 99.8% or 0.9, something <laughs> around there. Oh, he's flexing, David. He's flexing. He's like, yeah. <laughs> well, I should I should say that nice. it's, th this is extreme. Uh, and it was hard to achieve wow. such a high uh, <laughs> test coverage. But it was a requirement exactly because with every new, even minor version 
of iOS, there are some tweaks inside the Swift UI. So they are not visible for pro programmers because they are internal, but for a view inspector, they're critical. Mm -hmm. And so what I do now is, okay, there is a new Xcode available. So I download it, I launch it, I launch the tests on the newer simulator that got available and I immediately see what has changed and what needs tweaking. So usually it's just a matter of half an hour to fix it and be ready to go. So I usually release a new version um, the same day Apple releases the new iOS version. Wow. So that Because you have such high quality test, you can do oh, that. Yeah. That is awesome. Because I have good test coverage, they, uh, I cannot speak for their quality. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a wise he, man. He knows the difference. He does know the difference, and he's pointing out that there's a difference between code quality and 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 code coverage. But you have enough code coverage that it starts to tell you exactly where to go in to to start tweaking this hidden. API change. Yeah. Correct. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to make a pitch to Apple here on a different uh let's see here if I got that. Yes, on a different camera here. Hey Apple, you need to listen to this guy because we want our we want it to make we want our lives to be easier for unit testing and he's got a good strategy. So hey, I'd say, you know, you need to bring uh Alexi's phone and 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 see what you can do to get a team working with him. Yeah, Tim Cook, <laughs> listen up. I'm sure he's listening. <laughs> well, he usually follows our show, doesn't he? I, 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 oh, of course. He would, he would not even dare miss it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's see here. We have, we talked about the future of uh, View Inspector. Nice. So, Alexi, uh, do you have a call to action for the audience? Like, what would you like them to do after learning and, and viewing this, uh, this show? Um call to action would be write tests when, <laughs> when well, like, well, always, always write tests. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, view, view inspector just helps in a specific area. And uh, I've been programmer for many years and I, I, there were times when I disregarded tests. I thought they're not useful, they're a waste of time. But now, as you can see, I have this 99% test coverage, and I de which can tell you that I definitely changed my mind. Uh, but um, yeah, what, what to add? So tests can be useful, can be useless. And this, is, this library is an example where tests, you cannot rely on things without tests. Um, as I said, right now, it's just a matter of several minutes for me to verify this thing works because Apple constantly changes internals of Swift UI, which is totally fine because, because they're, they're the developers of it. And I am kind of digging in an official thing, in an unofficial field of things. Um, but uh, yeah, tests here are just a must. Otherwise I wouldn't be, be I won't be able to build this thing. It would be just too hard to, to maintain. So can I ask you about your personal uh, process when you are developing, not View Inspector, but say you're developing another app. Are you writing test first or are you writing the view layer and then coming right after that and writing the test because now it's, is it easier to write the view first? Uh, are you talking about Swift UI app or yes. UI kit yeah. app? So oh. I think, yeah, I, bri I, I briefly uh, mentioned it several minutes ago that r right now it's, it's practically impossible to write the test for Swift UI view and then write the, the view itself. You don't know the structure yet. You need to come up with a proper layout, the structure, uh, connect the states, everything, and then you can see, okay, this looks looks like a view that should work. And so only after that, you can write the, the test. And this is part of the future vision for the view inspector. One of the directions, one is to complete support for the Swift UI 
ideally before 3.0 comes out, <laughs> because otherwise I would have <laughs> too much work to, to do. And uh, the second one is basically this dynamic lookup, which would open the doors for um, writing tests prior the thing that you want to test. Yes, okay. Well, uh, thank, thank you. It sounds like you have you have the vision of making view inspector much more test first friendly, uh, which that's awesome. But you're you're kind of validating that what I'm struggling with is is okay to be struggling with. It's hard to do a test first with a view layer, uh, and it sounds like you're going to make. Uh, view inspector much more test first friendly yep. um, in the future. If you if you get some more time, maybe somebody could help you with this, Lance. <laughs> uh, that's true. I do need a holidays uh, are coming. Project to keep my <laughs> to knock the rust off my skills. Yeah, and uh, you yeah. were talking about dynamic lookup. Is the dynamic lookup uh, already in Swift? The uh, we're talking about reflection APIs, or is this something else that you need to do that? Uh, uh, well, I ha it's well, uh, View Inspector is already able to uh, unwrap everything. It just needs your instructions. So, I was thinking that I, I would just need to uh, create a logical graph of views as it uh, kind of unwraps them. So. Uh, Swift UI engine already uses the graph for rendering. I think it's called attribute graph or something like that. So basically I need to recreate the same structure and basically iterate over it oh. so I can look up the things. It sounds simple and easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's doable. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm being I'm trying to be funny, Alexi. It sounds yeah. really complicated <laughs> to me. Um, so yeah, it. I was trying to be funny, and it might not be coming across. Oh, well, Taylor Swift's gonna have any words with you, David? <laughs> yes. Uh, are we wrapping up, or we have eight minutes to show me the sample project here? Because it has several oh. test cases that I think are worth mentioning. Oh, go for it. All right. So th this is the other uh, repository that I have on GitHub. Uh, it's called, um, well, the app is called Country Swift UI and let me run it for a second. So uh, it's really simple. It's just pulls up the list of countries and with the, its details and uh, shows the country flag if you open one. So really straightforward like that. It's uh, pure Swift UI and it's a reference. So it's kind of my take on writing a clean architecture style project with a Swift UI. And it has a couple perks here. So first of all, it uses View Inspector for testing the entire UI. It has a bunch of tests in this uh, UI folder. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of them you already saw today. The other thing is it has another library that I worked on. It's a tiny one, it allows you to quickly toggle the uh, locale, um, nice. you know, darker light mode, and also like changing the font size for accessibility, which was really hard to um, test. Uh, so this similar thing is available in Xcode, but not for standalone apps. So when you deliver the app to your QA testers, they won't see any, um, pain to toggle these settings. So this library actually adds it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so for this project, um, um, I wanted to show one, one specific test right now, which is testing the localization. So as, as you s just saw, if you open the project and you open the flag here and change the uh, the locale, so it changes the close button mm -hmm. uh, text. So uh, I have a test here, which um, tests the this view that shows the flag. It extracts the button for closing it, 
Mm -hmm. And by default, it assures that asserts the, the value to be close, but for French locale, it should be fir firmer or firmer. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't know either. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it, this is uh, how you can write a test hmm. that can verify localization for you know views that you have without visually assuring that um, you know you, you don't have anything missing. That's pretty awesome. I'm raising the roof on that one. That's you get localization, test automation. Huh. Yep. Yeah. And another thing, uh, well, it's not really. And, and you oh, do yeah, it without it, having to run a simulator, right? And so they're going to be really fast tests. That's that's the bottom line here. Correct. Us. Correct. Yep. It's just the view that pulls the localization from the bundle. Uh, if it uh, if it is set up correctly, if the bundle is not you know connected, then it won't see it. So it actually verifies the view is in a proper state. Um, the other th the other thing I wanted to show you is using View Inspector for much more complex scenario, which is uh, verifying that deep uh, linking works correctly. The right screen is opened eventually. So th this project has this deep linking setup, and I won't cover it right now how it works. But I have this test uh, file that if you pull, it will, you know, do the trick. I clicked on it and the app followed the instructions and showed actually two screens in a row. So this is the pop-up and this is the detail view that got pushed mm -hmm. at the same time. And so I have a view inspector verifying that those screens are actually being displayed after I open the dip link. So let's see, um, yeah, deep link UI tests. So it has only two tests. First, it verifies that, um, so yeah, here is the, that advanced inspection thing that I showed you in the guide okay. where you actually have to kind of do the inspection inside a closure. Otherwise you won't have the, uh, the state connected to the view. So this is a synchronous inspection. And inside this asynchronous inspection, I assure that the first row link is been, uh, so uh, yeah, I extract the, the link and then activate it and uh, assert that, it, uh, well, I assert that it is activated. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. So the deep link opens the first uh, row which activates the dip link. And so I just assure that it is activated here and the detail screen is being pushed. And on the second test, I actually verify that the, uh, the state is correct and the right uh, view is there. So we have here no throw where I assure that the list is displayed, which is part of that third uh, view, I believe. Yeah, this is, uh, so, this is called, this mm -hmm. is, uh, this, this pattern is called in, 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 um, test automation is called spying. You've injected a spy to, to report out to you, uh, whether the internals are working the way you expect it. Yeah. The, the interesting, I also see a wait for, tell me about that. There's a wait for it. So I'm assuming view hosting host is what's going to trigger the code that yeah. the spy is going to yeah. observe. And then the wait for is. Yeah, yeah, it's just a regular a synchronous test with a XC test framework. Uh, and this thing here is just XC test expectation. Hmm. Um, so yeah, and you're right, uh, view host, view hosting dot host basically takes the view and uh, asks Swift UI view engine to render it. And so when at certain point it uh, connects it to the state and uh, we, hit that piece where we injected our inspection code. And so it uh, calls back this closure where we can uh, properly inspect the internals where everything is connected and not just a plain struct. Yeah, it's that first row link. Cause I, I'm assuming you can't get to view that first row link from the 
outside or it's important to have it happen during the call? I'm not sure exactly why you had to, you had to do, I'm assuming you had to do the spy because you couldn't get access to the first row link. Is that yeah, the thing is, uh, by, by default, this, um, this view has empty state. So it, uh, it, you see, the, it, this view has dynamic content. So when it starts, it has nothing, then it loads it and shows a loading status. When it it and it can end up with an error or with the content, and so here, um, I also have to wait until it kind of pulls the content from the dummy uh, environment that I set up for it in the in the test. So it just provides the dummy data. Here we go. We don't need to load anything, and so it, it kind of renders the right content. Uh, view already, and then we extract it. Nice. And then the wait for is that a, uh, I'm not familiar with that API. Is that a timeout of two seconds or two milliseconds? Yeah. Or how, how long is that? Uh, I think it's two seconds, and uh, it was lower, but I had to make it larger before uh, Travis. I think it just runs it slowly, yeah. and uh, these tests were like failing from time to time. And yeah, here. Um, tests are not as fast as you were referring to before, right. obviously because they are asynchronous. Uh, but yeah, uh, the, the entire view inspector test package runs for three or two seconds. So it's pretty fast. Oh, cool. So the entire then, test suite runs in two or three seconds. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. And it has like maybe five or six hundred tests. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's hard to, I don't know how, you know, I can't tell you, um, it would be nice to not have to have that pause. So that's sort of a, a code smell in, in, in test automation when you have to put the weights. And you did you did what everybody does, is you did, had the weight really short until it was determined to be flaky. And so then you had to make the, the weight larger. So uh, yeah, yeah, these kinds of tests we don't want a lot of because if it's our 90 percentile, 90 percent of our tests are like this and we'll have a pretty slow uh, test. <laughs> yeah. Um... Good point. I and I also consider this asynchronous test kind of a workaround. Uh, I wish we could uh, evaluate everything synchronously, and so our tests would be lightning fast. <laughs> but not not everything. <laughs> so one strategy that sometimes works, you know, you know is uh, when when. I'm assuming that there's some polling going on somewhere. Is there a polling going on, or is it just a wait? No, we're just waiting for the. Is that um, is that wait a um, a maximum timeout? That's a maximum. Oh, okay, so we could get done sooner than two seconds. That's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it completes earlier, then it uh, won't wait for the entire two seconds. Okay, yep. so that's not too bad then. That that means we're not polling for two seconds. It's just a a, a, a max, a timeout, as the code says. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which API do you use otherwise? I, I didn't know. Uh, I'm not sure. So I'm, 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 the, the little bit of Swift I do is rusty. I'm from Swift 3, so I'm trying to catch up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> David's Got shaking it. his head. <laughs> I don't like, use yeah, this lads. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, th this is the standard uh, function that it Xcode provides. Yeah. Uh, I mean, XCTS provides. Yeah. No, look, that looks good. So the good news is that's a that's a max timeout. So it could actually be a fairly fast test. We just don't know. And sometimes we you, you're saying it could be slow. So that's why you, you have it the way you coded it. Yeah, yeah. On on CI, on CI for some reason it, it runs slowly. But uh, yeah, on 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 my MacBook it's it's really fast. Yeah, obviously it would take no low like no <laughs> no less than uh, zero point one because I I put it here. Yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, anything else you want to show, or shall we wrap? Yeah, I think we should. We can wrap it up. Well, cool. Hey, Lexi, go ahead and and repeat. What were you? What 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 was the call to action you'd like people to do? Yeah, write tests. <laughs> write tests. That's right. And uh, where would they go to find uh, View Inspector? Sorry, once again. Where, where should they go? Where should people go to find View Inspector? Uh, well, obviously to GitHub. Um, <laughs> there we are. Boom. Go to GitHub, folks. <laughs> Good. View inspector, one word. 
Um, and then we already told Apple to call you up and, and, and get you on a team or, 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 or get a team assigned to you so we can have test, easy to test automation because uh, that would be high value. We would hate to have disruption on, on, as uh, X UI, as the uh, UI kit updates. But uh, yeah. Well, cool. That's all I have. David, do you have anything to say? No, I thank you, Alexi, for coming on. And, and uh, I learned a lot sitting here. I, I, I'm going to have to practice some more. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this has been great. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah. one thing you can never yeah, show on a web page is what you showed us is when you sat there on that let try and then you iterated to get the right code in there to inspect something. So that was high value. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks. This is TDD Academy. We're signing off.